Hey, so somebody has asked me to explain hydrogen bonding, so I'll give it a shot. First of all, hydrogen bonding is very is a very special form of dipole dipole interaction. Let's consider two molecules of water. We know that they stick together in a very strong force. They have every molecule has dispersion forces, so you know they have dispersion forces. They're polar, so you know they have dipole-dipole forces, but it's even stronger than just the normal dipole-dipole forces. They've got hydrogen bonding, and hydrogen bonding is a special intermolecular force. It's just an attraction between the negative end of one molecule to the positive hydrogen of another molecule. And this hydrogen is covalently bonded to another atom, so it's a negative a very, it's one of these small electronegative atoms, either oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, attracted to another hydrogen on a different molecule. That's an intermolecular force called a hydrogen bond. And this gives water a lot of its unique properties. Like what explains, well, why is water a liquid at room temperature, where other molecules that have similar molecular weight and similar dipoles, um, you know, why is it a liquid at room temperature? Why does it have such a high boiling point? Well, it's because of these special, very strong, the strongest intermolecular force called hydrogen bonding. So, now let's look at the water molecule drawn, drawn out looking at the dipoles. So when I'm talking about dipoles, I just draw an arrow. This is called a bond dipole pointing to the more electronegative atom. This means you're going to have a partial negative. So that's just the Greek delta sign partial negative on the more electronegative atom and a partial positive on the less electronegative atom. And we can remember our, our periodic table. The most electronegative is fluorine, oxygen chlorine, and it goes up towards the fluorine. And remember that hydrogen's over here on the periodic table, but really we should put the hydrogen up here near the boron and carbon when we're discussing electronegativity trends, but still the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen, so the arrow always points toward that more electronegative atom, and you will then have a partial negative charge on this oxygen. This partial negative charge is attracted to another molecule of itself, so there's another water molecule. Now here's the positive end of the molecule. So we have this positive end of the molecule attracted to this negative. A lot of times you'll see it right now as a dot, 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 dot. And that is called the hydrogen bond. It's not a real bond. It's not like a covalent bond like the other ones that you've seen. It's just an intermolecular force holding this oxygen close to this hydrogen. The length, the bond length is not as long as a typical covalent bond. So it's not as strong and it's not as short as a covalent bond, but it's still this bond or attraction, so we call it a hydrogen bond, but really it's just a very strong dipole-dipole force where you've got this negative attracted to the positive, giving water and other, atom, other molecules where you have a very small electronegative atom attracted to a hydrogen on a different molecule. So I'll show you this one more time, that nitrogen oxygen and fluorine can form hydrogen bonds with another molecule that has a hydrogen covalently bonded. So N-O-F, no F. We don't want any Fs in school. N-O-F are able to form hydrogen bonds with a hydrogen that is covalently bonded in a molecule. So again, nitrogen could form like say you've got two of these molecules, R just represents any generic whatever else we want attached to this molecule. So R just means generic. It can form a hydrogen bond with itself. So this nitrogen, hydrogen bonds with a hydrogen on another molecule of itself. And oxygen could form a hydrogen bond. So water definitely forms hydrogen bonds with this negative charge attracting this partial positive charge. So again, this is a partial negative and a partial positive charge on those molecules. That attraction is called a hydrogen bond. Fluorine with another hydrogen attached with a covalent bond forms these hydrogen bonds. So you say, well, why is this important? Well, we said, okay, first of all, it's important for water. It's also important to understand 
the properties of water. Water is unique. That remember that when it forms a solid, it actually takes up more space than when it was in the liquid form, so it's less dense than the solid ice is less dense than water. That's why ice floats. And these hydrogen bonds can be used to explain this, that a negative part of these molecules, so okay, so think about this in water. They're all mixed in together, they're attracted, the negative to the positive, negative to the positive, but they're free to rotate and move around, flip around, and they've got lots of motion. Remember, motion gives it energy, or energy gives its motion, however, energy in, is in this liquid phase. Now, if we slow the molecules down, they'll slowly line up where the negative lines up with the positive and they'll have more of a static hydrogen bond. It takes up more space. You could have two hydrogen bonds from one water molecule. You could have another hydrogen bond with another water molecule. And again, the oxygen is always attracted to the hydrogen on another one and it spreads out and you'll end up getting nice neat little crystal structures which you know of as snowflakes. So it's just how these water molecules line up with these hydrogen bonds forming all this extra space that makes it less dense and makes water float. And hydrogen bonds are also really, really important in biochemistry. So it's what holds us together. Hydrogen bonds hold our proteins in their particular structure. It also holds our DNA together. So hydrogen bonding is a good thing and it's pretty important to understand at whatever level of chemistry you're at. So let's look at guanine. This is part of the DNA structure. Remember you've got your bases and then this R is where their sugar phosphate backbone would be as part of a DNA double helix which was discovered by uh, Watson and Crick or written up by Watson and Crick. And they actually noted that, hey, look at this. We already knew that guanine always pairs up, or always the same number of G as C, and they figured out that, hey, guanine pairs up with cytosine. And then they proposed, oh, look, look at this. This oxygen is partially negative. That hydrogen has a partial positive because that more electronegative nitrogen is pulling its electrons, leaving that hydrogen more positive. Opposites attract. You can form a hydrogen bond right there. And then look at that, it matches up. This negative nitrogen is attracted to that partial positive hydrogen, forming, again, another hydrogen bond. And this is the structure that they published when they said, hey, we figured out the structure of DNA. But do you see any other parts of this molecule that could be held together by a nitrogen or hydrogen bond? All right there, a negative oxygen to a partially positive hydrogen. And now that is indeed what is understood that there are three hydrogen bonds holding together a guanine and a cytosine.